private. Oh, come on. I can't believe you're still angry at me because I won't drop everything and go to school. You Stockhampton. have not given me one good reason why you're yes, not going I have. I don't want to ruin the time you have with your father because I know it's important. Now, how unselfish can I get? He's not going to hold a grudge. You don't know the businessman's mind. He is holding a grudge. He's nursing it. Now, so please don't say anything to him about me while no, you're you out there I'm until thinking, I can sit down I'm with thinking, him and talk to him. I'm thinking face. there's another reason why. Hmm? Okay, you got me. Ah. And it is a selfish reason. Selfish. What is it? Well, this guy I used to work for, Will Morley, before I came to Walsh Enterprises, is coming into town to look over some office space for key executives that he wants to move here to Oakdale. Now, he's going to bring in a lot of money to Walsh Enterprises, so Lucinda wants me to give him the VIP treatment. See? Well, that's the, that one I believe. It's selfish, but it's honest. Great. Fine. How about that kiss now, huh? You don't give up, do you? No, not with you. It's because I love you so much. And you know, it would mean more than anything in the world to hear you say those words to me someday. I do love you. What? Well, excuse me. Could you say that one more time? I do love you. Hi, be careful. Hi. Oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> I love you, Mama. You know, I think it's about time that we head home. Oh, no. Oh, stay a while. Besides, Hal's going to be on his way here when he leaves the castle. Really? Yeah, we've all been working on this theory of Hal's that Teresa Saunders was James's contact here. Come on, sit down and enjoy the fire. You guys yes, roast those marshmallows. Please. Yeah, I gotta mm. roast some marshmallows. Okay, please, a little okay. while longer. Okay. 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 Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you talk to Bob and Kim? Well, it's all right with them if I move in, but Bob did tell me on the phone just now he wants me to talk to Andy. Oh, well, I can understand that, though I do want you to please hold off before you talk to Paul, just okay. until things settle down a little bit more. All this talk of James has him more upset than he's willing to admit. Well, I heard Leanne say that she thought she might not make the cheerleading squad because Vitaly was one of the judges. She meant that. Well, maybe I'm going to have to talk to this guy again. Listen, do me a favor. Talk to Carrie. See what she says. I'd like to be prepared before I face him. Well, how do you keep them from catching on fire? You have to be a real pro. Just watch me. Yeah, you're all like... Stuff. You know, it's funny, I thought you'd be a lot more happy about getting your business back. I'm happy. Thanks. I'm happy. All right. All right, okay, fine. So you expect things to work out one way, and then you find out that they don't always do. Yeah, like, it's not as important unless you have Sierra here to share it with. Just pull it off and eat it. Yeah. I got it. Thank you. Oh, good. I told you to get here. Your family's here. Yeah. Come in. Like what do you hear about you? Really? I'll be in the kitchen. Antonio, you've got to understand. Lily insisted on coming out here, and Ivan didn't want her to travel alone. She begged me to come along. I don't believe that. The last time I saw Iva, she was urging you to rest. Well, nobody knew this was going to happen. Look, Lily and I will be home right after the funeral. I'll be back before you even get back from Toronto. Wrong. I'm on my way back there now. I just signed the Toril Electronic Corporation and got all the money I need to start my new enterprise. Fine. We'll see you when you get back. Well, look, Meg, I'm not taking your word on any of this. I'm going to call Iva as soon as I get off the phone with you. And if I find out that you've been lying to me, then Rod is going to be arrested before he gets to attend his mother's funeral, and he'll have you to thank for it. Tonio? Tonio! Brought to you today by Fixident. For a hold that really makes a difference, Fixident and forget it. Becky, what's wrong? Nothing. I just have to call the farm. Why? 
Tony and I got disconnected, I just wanted to leave him a message. Um, he, he's on his uh, on the plane on the way back to. Oh, uh, Maggie, you all right? I heard you call Tony's name. What's going on? Yeah, I did, but no, nothing's wrong. Meg, is Tony upset that you're here? No. In fact, he, he um, asked me to give you both the sympathies. Um, do you mind? I just want to talk to Iva privately for a minute. Sure. Hi, Janie. It's Kirk Anderson. Yeah, look, uh, I've been trying to get in touch with the boss lady all night, but I haven't had any luck. So, um, I just wanted to leave her a message, if you could relay that to her. Tell her that I'm going to be driving Iva to the airport in the morning, and I'll be a little late to the office. But, um, t no, no, tell her not to worry. I'll be ready to take care of Will Morley as soon as I get in. Just give her the message, okay, Jane? Yeah. Dream of me. Good night. Bye. Oh, sorry about that. I just didn't want to listen to the panic. Oh, no, that's okay. I think I'm getting used to these all my business calls, either that or I'm getting as crazy as you are. Mm, yeah, crazy in love, right? Say, don't you two ever come up for air? The adorable kid brother. Hey, if I give you a quarter, will you go see a movie? Ah, uh, real funny. Listen, don't mind me, guys. I've just been living like a monk for the past few months. I'm a little jealous. Go right back to it. I won't stop you. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. Why don't I set you up with a really nice-looking secretary, Walsh Enterprise? Will you, will you leave us alone, then? <laughs> Is Mama sleeping? She gave me this haircut. What do you think? Don't answer that. No. She's up in bed, but I don't think she's sleeping. She's pretty excited about tomorrow. Well, I just called Jared back, and he's going to meet me at the airport. He's very excited. Kirk, you flying up with Iva? Uh, no, no, I can't this time. I've got an important client coming into town tomorrow. Yeah, well, you'll have plenty of time to visit with Mr. Carpenter when he's here, huh? I got it. Hello? Caleb, this is Tonio. I've been trying to reach you folks, but the line has been busy. Uh, was that Meg calling you? Uh, hold on, Tonio. Was that Meg that just called? It's Tonio. No. No, but be careful what you say. Uh, no, Tonio, it wasn't. Uh huh. Well, I know that she's in Wichita for the funeral. I just spoke with her. I thought she might be trying to reach you after I got off the phone with her. Yeah, well, no, she didn't. Uh huh. Well, I really don't like her going out there so soon after being released from the hospital. Uh, she told me that it was Iva's idea that she accompany Lily out there. Well, we were all real happy that they went out together. Why are you calling, Tony? Oh, I just want to let you know that uh, I did get a hold of Meg. Uh, you see, I called the house earlier when I couldn't find Meg at the penthouse, and I spoke with Emma. Uh, why didn't uh, Emma let me know that she was in Kansas? She didn't know, Tonio. We didn't want to worry her until Meg had called from Wichita to let us know that she was all right. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you. Give my best to everyone. Uh -huh. Good night, Tonio. What was that all about? A little fishing expedition, but I didn't bite. Well, how did you know what he was up to? Well, maybe it takes one con artist to spot another one. And so what we know is that Duncan found the gun in Teresa Saunders' room that had her prints on it, and Ballistic says it was bullets from that gun that killed Tobias. Well, then we were right. Teresa was James's contact here. You know, I remember her talking to me out at the castle once, and, and she was asking me, asking me all sorts of weird questions. You know, I think you should go over and talk to Andy and Leanne for a few minutes, okay? Mom, Please? I want to hear this. What else have you got, Hal? Well, we ran a check on the numbers that Saunders had called on her private line. Calls to Portugal, Egypt, Greece, Edinburgh. Hal, those are all places my dad's been. Yeah, well, Portugal is a new one, but we know that she was there recently, so it may be a new home base for him. And Duncan recognized the Egyptian number as being that of his distributor there, who is a friend of James. Well, then we can assume wherever Teresa goes, that's where we'll find James. You said there were two bodies they found? Yes, and I don't want you to let this get to you, but... It was Alan Simpson, the policeman who was hired to protect you in New York. So what do you say this weekend? Okay. Oh, hello, hello. 
Cindy. Oh, I'm late. It's bad for you. Look. I hope I'm I'm not too late for the housewarming. Well, I'm glad I made it because John told me get over to my daughter's house and take her a housewarming present on pain of divorce. Uh, sounds like John. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's uh, not a housewarming. It's just. Uh, a, Unpa unpacking, I guess. Right. So, oh, well, I made a mistake. Well, John made a mistake. Never mind. It's a surprise. It's a surprise present, like the surprise when you brought the little baby home from Greece. Yeah. Hey, uh, Andy. How you doing? Hey, darling. Hey, See. would you come and spend Thanksgiving with us? Because I think John would really like it. You bring as many people as you want. Well, have I interrupted something? Has someone died? You know, as a matter of fact, uh, yeah, Hal was just filling us in on, um, James's contact here in Oakdale. Oh, well, I'd like to hear about that. I, I mean, I'm all ears. I think I'm the last one to get a phone call from him. I'm, well, I'm not sure of the official tally. I reported it to the police, didn't I? <laughs> yes, and we hope that everybody he contacts does the same. Otherwise, we'll never catch him. Well, may I ask who his contact is? Is it somebody in the police department again? At this moment, all the evidence points to Duncan's housekeeper. Oh. I don't think I ever met her. Hi, darling. Hi. Hi. I guess, I guess you're glad that it isn't your new partner. Well, I was never really worried about Emily. She hates them back as much as you do. Yeah, but she was up there at the Ruxton Hills house right at the end, pregnant with his child. Lucinda, you know, I don't think any of us needs to be reminded about that night. Barbara, I don't think I agree with you. I think it's like history. Didn't somebody say you have to study it so you don't repeat it and make the same mistakes again? Mm -hmm. How about... A grand tour of the house, get my mom. Yeah, yeah, you got us. So we have a huge <laughs> I love upstairs. it. <laughs> I want to get a peek at, at John's grandson. Can I have that too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Let's start up there in the nursery. Well, we'll start with him. Far on the other side of his house. Well, James Stembeck will have to do without his contact here, since Sister Teresa became a threat to Lilith, and Lilith does not tolerate threats from anybody now that she's free. All that remains. It's for me to settle my old score with Duncan. To make it appear as though he has killed Shannon in a fit of jealousy and despair. <laughs> I think that the fashion show is the perfect place for my grand finale in Oakdale. Hello? Hello, Lilith. It's Tonio. Mr. Reyes, are you calling me from Toronto? Uh, no, I've finished my business and I'm hurrying home to you. I'm very flattered, but what about your wife? Didn't she just get out of the hospital? Meg has gone out of town to attend a family funeral. Look, my plane will be landing soon in Oakdale. Can I see you tonight? Yes. I'll have some Madeira waiting. Good. I'll see you later then. What? Poor Mrs. Reyes. I do hope that she doesn't hate funerals too much, since she'll soon have another one to attend. <laughs> and she'll never know. She'll never know that it was me who freed her from an unfaithful mate. A man no woman should have to tolerate. I've been betrayed again by two people I trusted. I want to believe that you knew nothing of Ernst being a criminal or his conspiracy with Teresa. I knew nothing about his past, sir. Uh, he gave me a job here in Oakdale. I was grateful to get the job. I assumed he was loyal to you. I believe you. I want you to take over as head of my guards. I want you to move in here. I want you to answer any calls that come through on this line. When the police get their tap on, I want you to keep the collar on the line as long as you can so the police can get a trace. I understand. Fine. Well, then you can move your things in right now. Yes. Thank you, Miss McKechnie. I'm so sorry, Duncan. I, I know you trusted Teresa. Tobias would still be alive if I hadn't. I put a lot of people in jeopardy by bringing her no, here. No, no. There's no way that you could have known that she was working for Stenbeck. I mean, she certainly wasn't his type after, after Barbara and, and, and Emily. He was using her. She could very well have been dead before she even realized. 
Listen, her father is my caretaker at the estate in Edinburgh. And perhaps I should call the poor man. No, I'd wait on that. Um, but I, I would call uh, Lilith's brother, Roderick, in Egypt again. I've tried. But nobody answers at the house in Alexandria, which is strange, because there are a great many servants there. Perhaps I'll go back into town and see Lilith. See if she's heard anything from Roderick. Perhaps they know where Teresa is. I'd like to know whether Roderick has seen Stenbeck recently. What a bloody mess this is. Well, there, there is one bright side. I mean, after all this, Barbara will understand about your reneging about the fashion show being here. I mean, then your precious privacy won't be invaded again. Well, I'm not going to go back on my word to Barbara about the fashion show. And if you're going to model in the fashion show, then who cares about my precious privacy? You know, amid all of this horror, it's good to have you back here again, Lassie. Well, I've, I'll take you home, and then I'll go on to Lilith's. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll go with you. I have some decorator stuff I want to talk to her about. Hello? 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 I know someone's there, and I have a very good idea of who it is. If this is Stenbeck, you should probably know that we found out that Teresa was spying for you. It's very like you to hide behind a woman. Perhaps you've wised up and you know you better not come back to Oakdale yourself. If you do, it'll be the last trip you ever take. I'm waiting for you. What did he say? Not a word, but I know it was the monster himself. Well, why would he call Teresa here? Why isn't she with him by now? Well, she'd need a passport to get out of the country. And with James on the move all the time to try and evade the law, perhaps she hasn't been able to contact him. <sighs> Raymond, we'll be going to the mainland now. A call just came through this line. I doubt there'll be any more, but stand by just in case. I will, Mr. McKechnie. Good. Are you sure you're up to seeing Lilith? I, if Teresa's calls to Egypt mean that James is there, Perhaps Lilith is the only one that can tell us where Teresa is. I think it's absolutely charming. And you're spacious, nice. Although, you're brave souls. Aren't they brave souls? Why do you say that? Why? Give me the creeps to be living in a house, the former owner of which was a convicted criminal. Oh, it adds atmosphere, I think. Let's go to the press. Let's do it. He's in the penitentiary. <laughs> Hi, darling. Hi. Right. Hey, you know, I was going to ask you anyway. You gave me some idea of what you paid Tony O. When you bought your business back. Well, no, come on. I want to know if you have any idea how he can afford to put down a year's rent on posh office space at the Miller Brothers building. He can't. He well, should have waited until he had a few more clients. He's in Toronto even as we speak. Terrell Electronics. No, I, no I've tried. Terrell is not going to go I with the American You firm. tried, Kirk tried, mm -hmm. but it's only always on the inside track, and he is spending money like it's going out of style. Keep my ears open, see what I can pick up. Yes, I will too, and then we can compare notes, like old times. No, not quite like old times. No. No, no Sierra. Uh, Ah, Cinda. Darling, Silver, my Thank girl. You. This is really beautiful. This is oh, a little bit too extravagant. We'll use it uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, well, we'll so. have to get a bigger turkey. The one we'll have is a little <laughs> silly on this. My goodness, this is just beautiful. Thank John for me, too, hey, will you? We will. Please, yeah. Wow. Andy, why don't I give you a lift home? I don't want you folks to blame me for your being out so late. Hey, keep can walk. It's not that far. Stay for a while. Uh, oh. I'd like to, but I have a few things I want to talk to Andy about. Okay. Come on, guys. Um, yeah, good night. Good night, man. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Well, they're talking out at the Snyder Farm. Pick a little talk a little, eh? Huh? I'd better get a beeper yeah. for Kirk, like the one you had. Oh, surely you wouldn't want to intrude on employees' personal life at this time of night. Sister, I absolutely I would. There's something I want to talk to him about, and I can't wait. What is it? Oh, take the boyish smile off your face, darling. We're competitors. <laughs> Fun and games. We're competitors. I'm not going to forget it, don't you? So you really love me. You actually said it. Well, I didn't mean to. It, it just slipped out. Well, I guess that means it's true, right? Well. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. You too.
Maggie, what is going on? I'm so glad you backed up what I said to Tonio. Well, why did you tell Tonio that it was Iva's idea for you to go up there, and why did he call here to check it out? It's a long story. I'll explain later. Well, you had better. And I still don't understand why you went back to him. I've already... Well, do you want to talk to Lily? Hold on. Lily! Caleb wants to talk to you. Caleb! Hi, sweetie. Is everything okay up there? Uh, yes, considering. Yeah. Well, when are you coming back? Tomorrow, after the services. That means I'll still get to meet Jared Carpenter. Well, good. That's good. Listen, Lily, have you noticed anything strange about Meg? How she's been acting with Tonio? Uh, yes, but I, I, I can't talk now. Okay, but I expect you to, uh, to tell me everything when you get back. Listen, Ivan wants to talk to you, okay? Good night. Hi, Lily. How are you doing? Okay. I'm really proud of my father. He's being very, very strong. He, it's really rough for him to lose his mother this way. He's being very, very strong. So how is Meg doing? I'll tell you about it when I get back, okay? Well, I understand that you can't talk, so I'll let you get to bed. Okay. Good night. Good night. I asked Lily about Meg, but she said she couldn't talk, so... I know. She said the same thing to me. Yeah. You know, I know for a fact that Meg was going to leave Tonio right before the accident, but what I don't understand is why she went back to it. When, when he called just now, he was called as an executioner. There's just no love in their relationship. Every time she's around Tonio, she's scared to death of him. I don't understand it either. I don't understand how he can intimidate her so. That's a good question. Hello? Iva, is that you? Oh, Lucinda, hello. Is my brilliant assistant there? No, he just left. Yeah. Oh. I wanted to check something with him about his schedule for tomorrow. Oh, well, I know he tried to get in touch with you, so... He just left a message with Jane, something about uh, he was going to be busy all day at the office with Will Morley. Will Morley? No, no, no. I think you've got the name confused. No, no, I don't think so. Well, I think so. Will Morley isn't coming in until after Thanksgiving. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. Now, part two of As the World Turns. I can't imagine why, but Iva sounded upset about something about Kirk's schedule tomorrow. I think it's getting serious between her and that right-hand shark of yours. It's very odd coupling. Yeah, you're telling me. It was good enough for her. <laughs> He reminds me of you in your hungrier days, without the charm, of course. Is that supposed to make me feel better? <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Greg, good night. I've been meaning to ask you, do we have a problem with Veronica Lothers? You know, they're in direct competition with the line that I'm designing for Wisconsin. No, 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 don't worry. Your beautiful little head is one of the few accounts that Tony hung on to, so there's no conflict of interest, okay? Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night, sis. Good night. Good night. You know, we really yeah. should be going yeah. ourselves. Yeah, I just want to check and see what forensics has got. Thanks, bro. You know, I'm doing my best not to fall apart at the seams of uh, Detective Simpson for Paul's sake, but I'm, I'm sure it was James who had him killed, and I'm sure it was James behind all these crazy things that happened to me in New York, too. Well, I think you're doing a great job not falling apart and try to keep it that way, because I think this is going to hit Paul pretty heavily. I'm going to check in at the station. Barbara, do you think this um, <clears throat> frigid silence is appropriate for a happy family gathering? Yeah. I think it beats hypocrisy. We have nothing to talk about, Lucinda, except the factory, and, Luc and Jessica will be in touch with you. You know, Darling, I want to talk to you about something very important. Oh, I'm sure you do. I just don't yeah. want to listen. All right, well, 
So tell me while they pick you up for school tomorrow, as usual? Oh, well, you know, actually, I was thinking that maybe I should walk to school tomorrow with um, some of the kids from the neighborhood. I mean, it's a good way for me to get to know them, you know? Man, where'd this come out of? What do you mean? I always drive you to school. Why do you want to walk all of a sudden? No, the groom and the school. I told you, Paul. I see you so much that I don't really get to meet other people. Look, I'm not trying to make you angry. Who says I'm angry? Well, I can hear it in your voice. It's the same way you spoke to Hank when he offered Look, you Andy Look, I was just Andy kicked off, all right? Hank's my friend. I got to know him a long time before Andy did. Yeah, well, so what? I mean, can't he be Andy's friend, too? Yeah, he can be Andy's friend, too, Leanne. Oh. You know, this really bothers me. I mean, I... I think that you really like to keep the people you care about very close to you and away from everyone else. I don't think that's good. Well, it looks like they've gone to bed. Yeah. Listen, um, what's the problem about the apartment? I thought that was all settled. Well, it was, mostly. Uh, but after I talked to you, your mother and Bob, they thought it'd be a good idea for me to talk to you, too. About what? Well, Andy, I've wanted to bring this up with you and Paul before, several times, but it just never seemed to be the right time. Um, Barbara's asked me to hold off with Paul because of all the pressure he's been under with his dad. Yeah, I guess we all have our grief. Paul's got his dad, I got my booze. We're both different. Yeah, well, when I was your age, I thought of myself as very different. That's really what I want to talk to you about. Oh, no. Hank, you're not a closet drinker, are you? <laughs> no, but um, I was very closeted about my sex life at one time, and I try not to be now. Your sex life? Andy, I'm trying to tell you I'm gay. I'm sure you've been aware of kids you've known who are gay. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've been aware of them. But I don't have any friends like that. What, one of the swimmers on, on my swim team last year, one of the best swimmers, was, he... I mean, he didn't really... He didn't seem... The other guys that knew him better said that he, he said that he was. Well, did you ever get to know him better? No. Once I found once I found out that he was gay, I I steered clear of him. Annie, I'm not trying to put you down for that, but that's the kind of attitude that makes it hard for gay people to be honest about themselves. If you'd gotten to know the guy, maybe you would have found out that he was a person with good points and bad, just like anyone else. Yeah, but, I mean, you, you, if, you hang, if you hang out with people like that, then people start to think that, that you're like that, too. And I have enough problems that I, without, without that, Well, anyway, I, I'm still the same person I was before I told you. I, I hope you still consider me a friend. I think, you, um, I think that it's really good that you're being honest like you are. What did, what did Mom and Bob say? They didn't say too much. It's okay with them if I move in, but they think I should talk to you first. I don't know what to say. Well, well don't say anything until you thought it through. Uh, and, and whenever you decide it doesn't make any difference, I'll, I'll still think of you as a friend. Good night. got a busy day tomorrow. Don't you want to get some sleep? Oh, no. I'm kind of wound up. What did Lucinda Dixon say? Had something to do with Kirk, didn't it? Yeah. Why don't you call him? Have it out with him. He's home by now. Because he probably tried to lie his way out of it. That's fine. So what are you going to do? You're not going to tell him what's bothering you? No, I'm not going to. Tomorrow's too important to me. I'm not going to okay. be upset all day about Kirk the whole time I'm with my father. I just... 
I don't understand why relationships with the opposite sex have to be so difficult. <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. Mine have been complicated since I was in kindergarten. Just ask Ellie. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Hmm. How old were you when I left for Kansas? When I went to stay with Uncle five. Henry, like five yeah. or six? Yeah. And Meg and Holden were even younger. And I don't know. I've gotten to know them. But you, I don't, I don't know at all. Well, I think that has something to do. You know, there's been a lot of changes in our lives since I moved back from Chicago. Yeah, I guess so. But I'd like to spend more time with you. So would I. I'd like to spend more time with you, too. Mama tells me that you confide in Ellie, so I was thinking I, maybe I could pry some of your secrets out of her. <laughs> don't count on it. Ellie would never rat on me. I don't know her either. I mean, the only time I get to see her now that she's all grown up is on holidays. You know, but I stayed with her that time that she was beaten up, though, by that burglar. Hey, door's wide open. Anybody can walk right in here. Oh, well, you're not just anyone. A kind word. <laughs> hey, hi, Caleb. How are you? Hi. How are you doing, Craig? Good. Listen, I'm going to lock up the barn, okay? My goodness, what are you doing here? Well, I was over town Margo's when Lucinda called here, and she said that you sounded upset. Oh, no, I'm not upset. I'm confused. So am I. What are you confused about? Oh, goodness. I don't even know. So what are you confused about, Kirk? Well, yeah, I'm... I've gotten to know him a lot better, and, uh... I found there's a very loving man inside this... Shark. Yeah. Shark. So what's confusing about that? Well, it's kind of difficult to have a relationship with a shark. I mean, <laughs> who has a split personality? I mean, it's like being in love with uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Did you say in love? Yeah. It's getting serious? Well, not as serious as a tropical disease, but uh, I talked to Kirk's friend Addie, and she thinks that he's very much in love with me and that... I would be very good for him. Ivor, right, what's got you upset tonight? He lied to me about something, and... I mean, it's no big deal, you know, but if he's gonna lie to me about something small, then... how can I trust him about anything? Oh, gosh, I've been so careful not to care about him till I was absolutely sure. We all try to be careful. Doesn't always work out mm. that way. Look at us. We trust each other. So why couldn't we work things out? <laughs> because you were in love with Sierra. You always will be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, does uh, Emily understand? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, oh, sure. She does. Okay. Good. You know, we're <clears throat> cooling things down a lot because, I mean, we're partners now, so it's... Uh, mm. Is that the only reason why? No. <laughs> no, actually, she's uh, keeping something from me, and it kind of came out. And uh, tell you the truth, I'm having a hard time getting past it. Something about Tonio? You know? Well, it's hard to keep something like that a secret, you know. How can you let him into this house knowing what he did behind Meg's back? For Meg's sake, and Seth and Holden. With Seth and Holden, no? Why did they tear him apart? Because we all agreed that Meg's feelings were more important than getting even with Tonio, and it would hurt her too much. Meg knows, Iva. Emily told me that. Meg and Emily have talked about it. Okay, guys, barn is all locked up. Iva, right, what's wrong? I wish you'd reconsider your plans for after you close up here. I've given it a lot of thought, Maggie. I still think it's best if I head out west. I wish I knew why she got so upset when she talked to Tonio. I gave up trying to understand that relationship a long time ago. It's not that hard to understand. She loves him. And she'll do anything to make that marriage work. I'm not so sure. I think she did love Tonio once. But now, just like Sierra, she realized what kind of guy he really is. I don't think she loves him now. 
After losing that baby, that was the only thing that could have kept them together. She moved back with them. I know. It's the one thing I don't understand. Caleb and Pam, they think something weird is going on. You know, it's funny. I never... I never used to get along with, with Meg, but... But after she married Tony, oh, she changed. I know she's been disillusioned by him. I know it. She's finally realizing what kind of guy he is. I think she's finally learning how important real love is now. Good night. Good night. Just some milk. It'll help you sleep. What? What is it? I have no idea whether or not Sister Teresa contacted James Stenbeck at Roderick's. Well, the phone company said she did. Do you happen to know where Roderick is? No one's answering his phone at the house in <laughs> Alexandria. My brother does not confide in me of his every move. He's probably traveling about Egypt peddling your liquor. Well, I hope that's all he's doing, since there are severe penalties for harboring a fugitive like James Stenbeck. I will tell him that when I see him. I will also ask him about Sister Teresa and James Stenbeck. Well, uh, it's nice to see you two together again. I see that my efforts at reconciliation are working. Uh, don't get the wrong idea, Lilith. It's, I'm just helping Duncan through a hard time. Oh. Um, the reason why I came tonight was to ask you if you've thought about which paintings you want to sell to Tom and Margot. No, I haven't, but I will soon. Listen, I don't mean to be inhospitable, but it is rather late, and I am a bit tired. Oh, sure, yeah, it is late, and you should have kicked us out a long time ago. <laughs> the police will probably be wanting to question you about Roderick, since he seems to be their best lead to James Stenberg. Mm, I am so sick of the bloody police. Ever since Tony Reyes was beaten up outside my door, they haven't done nothing except pester me. I think the world would be a much better place if we didn't have any police at all. I don't know about that, Lilith. It's quite a jungle out there. If only. Who could that be at this hour? Mr. Ryan. Hello, Lilith. Mr. Reyes, what are you doing here? It's after midnight. Yes. Oh, well, I just, um, got back from my trip to Toronto, and I'm still trying to corner you and get you to sign that modeling contract for Veronica Leathers. Lilith will be leaving Oakdale immediately after the fashion show next week. Uh, yes, I know that. Actually, we thought uh, we could fly you from Africa to Italy to shoot the modeling assignments. It would be very lucrative for you. Oh, lucrative. Well, Duncan, I am going to need money after the divorce. I think it's a bit late for us to be discussing the contract this evening, Mr. Rosa. Yes, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure I got a hold of you before you left town. We still have to settle some unfinished business. Yes, we do. Well, I'll call you in the morning. All right, good. Good night, then. Good night. Duncan, don't look so suspicious. I can read his mind. He thinks that I'm up to some illicit business with Mr. Reyes. Well, uh, um, we better get going, Duncan. Oh, I'm not going to be needing that painting that you left me that's in the bedroom. I'll go and get it, all right? Mm -hmm. I know she was expecting Reyes. I hope she doesn't get too much more involved with him or she will need another 12 years of psychiatric care. Oh. Oh, my God. What? Why didn't I think of this before? If Teresa is working for Stenbeck, it could be that this whole story she told me about going to see Megan and, and Megan saying that Lilith was cured was all a lie. Why would she lie about that? To make me trust Lilith, who may be just as sick and dangerous as ever. Kirk, at last. Hi, homeboy. I've been trying you out at the farm. <laughs> well, I'm back from the farm, but I'll tell you, it's been my night. <laughs> yeah, mine too. I've got news. News. Cal Strickland of Stricko Oil is coming into the office day after tomorrow to meet with us. 
You're kidding me. How did you do that? Good going. Well, I want to see you bright and early in my office to discuss All right, strategy. Oh, I'm get out of here. Oh, um, I've got to drive Ivan to the airport tomorrow early, but I promise I'll be in the office no later than 9 o'clock. How's that? That's fine. I'll see you then. By the way, why did you tell Ivan that Will Morley was coming into town tomorrow? She seemed somewhat confused when I, when I had to tell her that he's not due until after Thanksgiving. Yeah, okay. All right, guy, that's it. Come on. Let's get out of here. All right, I'll be right there. Thank you both. For Good night. Yeah, yeah thanks. Well, don't worry about this Stenbeck stuff. We're going to nail him this time. He'll be out of your life. I hope so, Tom. Me too. Yeah, no. uh, I'm going to wait outside, Hal. Uh, right? Yeah, I'll be right there. Oh, I wanted to tell you that we wanted to be a moment. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the tray. Thanks for the FBI. Barbara, I had hoped to avoid a phony goodnight to you, Lucinda, by coming out here. I really want to talk with you about oh, something very important tonight. the only tonight. thing we have to talk about is the factory, and Jessica will be in touch. First of all, I want you to design a new collection for Simply Barbara with what? your panache, with your flair. Are you out of your mind? I have Barbara Ryan originals now, and as far as I'm concerned, Simply Barbara can stay flush down the toilet where you and Kirk Anderson and Annette Pearl have put it. Barbara, darling, I have your best interests at all. Uh, but if you <laughs> cannot cooperate with me in this, I might just have to... Just let loose my suspicions to your husband about little Adam Hughes. I mean, I think he's the most trusting police detective in the world. I don't think it's even crossed his mind that that could be his thing to say on floor. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a deal. That too. What are you thinking about? How grateful I am you came all the way out here to be with me. I'd do anything for you, especially after all you've done for me. And I better go get me. Maggie, there's something I gotta say before you leave tomorrow. Now, I, this may be way out of line. Look, it's been a long day, and, and it's been a really upsetting day. I don't think we should talk anymore. Uh, I have to. Uh, tomorrow may be too late. And I, I'm getting the idea that you may feel the same way I do. About what? About me. is CBS.